Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome to lecture 49. We are discussing about the recent advances in turbofine engines. In last lecture, we were discussing about turbofine engine with intercooler. Then we have discussed about the turbofine engine with intercooling and regenerator. We also have explored some of the things which are available in open literature for say NUEC project. That is what is running at Europe. We were discussing about what all are the advantages and challenges for the intercooling and regenerative kind of cycle configuration. And this is what is very important and the ongoing work it is more focused on incorporation of this intercooler and regenerator. So, let us take one numerical in order to build the confidence in terms of how do we proceed for the cycle analysis. So, let us take the data, say we have two spool gear turbofan engine with following data saying we have altitude, it is a ground condition, it is at the sea level, bypass ratio for the engine is 12.5, fan pressure ratio is 1.65, LPC pressure ratio is 4.6, HPC pressure ratio is 6.6. .6. Core engine mass flow rate it is 36.8 kg per second. Combustion chamber efficiency is given 98 percent. The pressure drop in combustion chamber is 3 percent. Turbine entry temperature is 1830 Kelvin. Tailpipe pressure drop it is 2 percent. Say here we have incorporated with the intercooler and regenerator. The effectiveness it is similar to what we say in terms of efficiency for the devices. Say for intercooler it is 0.9 and for regenerator it is 0.85. As we have discussed, they both are subjected to pressure drop. So, pressure drop in the intercooler is say 2 percent, pressure drop in regenerator also is say 2 percent. The isentropic efficiency of these different components are say 0.9 for the diffuser, 88 percent for the fan, 87 percent for the compressor, turbine efficiency is 92 percent. For both the nozzles, the efficiency is 96 percent and mechanical efficiency we are taking as a 99 percent. The calorific value of the fuel is 43,000 kilojoule per kg. CP value we are considering say gamma equal to 1.4 and Cp as 1005 joule per kg Kelvin. Similarly, for the hot gas Cp value is 1156 joule per kg Kelvin and gamma value we are considering as 1.3. So, let us look at the diagram here. What all is given based on that you can make this diagram. I suggest you to do practice for plotting this diagram because what all we are discussing in terms of temperature that is what is very important. Okay? At the same time my pressure point also they are of great importance. So, just do the practice for drawing this diagram TH diagram what we have plotted here. So, let us look at how do we solve this numerical. So, what all we have is our intake and fan. For that, we have our entry condition that is what is known to us. Efficiency value for the fan, pressure ratio for the fan is given. Based on that, we can calculate what will be the temperature and pressure at the exit of intake as well as for the fan. The next component what we have is our LP compressor. For this LP compressor, the pressure ratio and efficiency they are given. So, we can calculate 
what will be the exit pressure and exit temperature from the LP compressor. Now, here in this case we have component name intercooler and this intercooler we are given with the effectiveness and the pressure drop in the intercooler. So, in order to calculate we are looking for the temperature at the entry and exit of the intercooler as well as what is the temperature at the exit of the intercooler for my bypass stream. So, these things need to be calculated. We have our component it is a HP compressor and for HP compressor efficiency and pressure ratio they are given. So, we can calculate what will be the temperature and pressure at the exit of the HP compressor. Now, from this HP compressor exit we are taking air to the regenerator and for this regenerator we are given with the effectiveness and the pressure drop. Here in this case in order to solve the cycle analysis we need to have the exit temperature from the LP turbine to be known. Okay. If we say we are looking for LP turbine exit temperature we must know what is LP turbine entry temperature. So, here in this case if we look at say in order to calculate what will be my T04H we need to have these numbers of T04, T07, T08 and this is what is our work balance. So, if we are not known by that then we need to go with some kind of assumption. So, here in this case since this temperature is unknown T04H these temperatures are also unknown. So, we need to follow a systematic method for the calculation. So, here in this case one of the approach I will be discussing you can go with other method also. So, here what I will be doing is we will be assuming the value of fuel air ratio. Based on that fuel air ratio we will try to calculate what will be my temperature at the entry and exit of the HP turbine. For say entry temperature we have turbine entry temperature that is what is known to us. So, we can calculate what will be T06. Now, once this T06 is known to us for given efficiency and the expansion work we can calculate what will be T07. Once this two values are known to us in terms of T07 we can calculate what will be T04H. Okay. And next component what we have is our combustion chamber. So, what numbers we will be getting in, in terms of say temperature at the entry of the combustion chamber we will be finding out what will be our fuel air ratio. So, you can understand initially we have assumed our fuel air ratio. Now, we are recalculating our fuel air ratio means we need to check whether our assumption and these numbers are same or not. If they are same then we will be following the same process and we will try to calculate what will be the exit pressure and temperature from combustion chamber, from HP turbine, from LP turbine because that is what is of our need. Now, once we have all temperatures and pressure at the exit of the LP turbine we will be able to calculate say the exit velocity coming out from the nozzle, core nozzle. Similarly, we can calculate what will be say exit velocity from the fan nozzle. So, this we will be calculating based on what all earlier we have done in terms of calculation of critical pressure ratio. We will be comparing our critical pressure ratio with the atmospheric pressure and we will be deciding whether our nozzle is chalk or unchalk and accordingly we will be doing our calculation for the exit velocity. Now, from this exit velocity we will try to calculate the performance parameter for this particular cycle. So, you can understand the logic, the flow of calculation that is what is similar. We have difference because of incorporation of two components that is intercooler and regenerator and that is the reason why this numerical it is dedicatedly been incorporated in this lecture. Though it is adding one more lecture, but I feel we must have understanding how the cycle analysis can be done for this kind of cycle configuration and that is the reason why this lecture is added, additional lecture in this week. 
Now, let us look at say very first component we have is our inlet, we are given with our ground condition and my m infinity is 0 means my flying velocity is 0. We have our term it is diffuser efficiency, based on that diffuser efficiency we will try to calculate what will be the exit total pressure from the diffuser. Since my Mach number is 0, so my intake exit pressure that will be 101.325 kilo Pascal. Similarly, we are looking for the temperature calculation. This temperature based on our isentropic relation, we can calculate here also Mach number is 0. That is the reason my exit temperature will be 288.15 Kelvin. So, these are the pressure and temperature at the exit of the intake. Now, we have our next component that is what is fan. For fan, the compression ratio is given it is 1.65. Now, based on what pressure we know at the entry of the fan, we can calculate the exit pressure from the fan it is 167.19 kilo Pascal. Now, we want to calculate what will be the exit temperature and as we have discussed in past almost all weeks, we know the relation that is what is available in terms of say temperature ratio, this temperature ratio we are correlating in terms of say pressure ratio and efficiency of the fan. So, let us put these numbers and based on that we can calculate the exit temperature from the fan it is 338.52 Kelvin. Okay. So, this device we have. Now, next component we have is our LP compressor that process is represented by 2A to 3. If we put for the number say for LP compressor the pressure ratio is given 4.6 efficiency is 87 percent. In line to what all we have done for the fan, we can do the calculation for exit pressure from the LP compressor and this pressure is coming 769.07 kilo Pascal. The temperature ratio we can correlate in terms of compression ratio and efficiency. By putting the known numbers, we will get say LPC exit temperature to be 551.18 Kelvin. Be careful in terms of writing the pressure ratio numbers. Since we are having these three pressure ratios all are different. One is for fan, second it is for LP compressor and third one it is for HP compressor. So, let us try to look at for the third device. So, here in this case the air that is what is coming out from our LP compressor that is what will be passing through the intercooler. So, let us try to look at what is our intercooler. So, here in this case if we look at this is the air which is entering from our LP compressor and this is the air which is coming out from the fan. So, in order to check with the performance of this device, this is represented in terms of effectiveness. So, here if you look at this is representing the effectiveness of the intercooler. So, that is what is given by T03 minus T03C. So, this temperature divided by T03 minus T02A. Now, for this the exit temperature we can calculate because the effectiveness for the intercooler it is given 0.9 and other temperatures are known to us. So, the exit temperature from the intercooler that is 359.79 Kelvin. So, you can say there is a change of temperature in terms of say T03 to T03C. So, 551.18 to 359.79 Kelvin. Now, in order to calculate the exit pressure, we are given there is a pressure drop of 2 percent that is what is giving the exit pressure from the intercooler to be 753.69 kilo Pascal. Okay. Now, these are the pressure and temperature that is what is entering inside our HP compressor. So, let us try to understand that part here in this case 
suppose say this I am representing as a control volume and if I will be putting my energy balance here, we need to calculate what will be the exit temperature of this stream which is coming out from the fan. So, in order to calculate that, we will be putting the balance here that is what will be giving T010 as this equation. The bypass ratio for this engine is given it is 12.5. So, let us put that number and we will be getting the exit temperature that is 353.83 Kelvin. And the exit pressure for this intercooler that is also 2 percent drop. So, this pressure that is what is coming as 163.85 kilo Pascal. Remember 2 percent pressure drop that is what is happening both in hot stream as well as in cold stream. So, do not make any mistake here in terms of understanding and explanation also. Now, we are having these stations which are coming out from the intercooler. Let us try to look at say HP compressor. For HP compressor, the pressure ratio is given 6.6. .6. Since we know what is our pressure at the entry of the HP compressor, we can calculate exit pressure and that is 4974.35 kilo Pascal. The temperature ratio we are correlating in terms of pressure ratio and efficiency. If we are putting that number, my exit temperature is coming 655.3 Kelvin. So, this is the temperature about what we are discussing at this moment. Okay. Now, as we have discussed during our earlier explanation, when we are moving our curve, this line, constant pressure line towards the left hand side, you know these are converging lines. And if we are moving towards say on other side, suppose say on right hand side, they are say diverging lines. So, that is what is representing the effect of intercooling in nice way. Though we are having pressure ratio to be higher, but because of we have our movement on left hand side, my temperature will be lower. Okay. Now, what will be our next requirement? It says like the air which is coming out from the HP compressor, that is what is entering inside the recuperator and it is getting heated up and that air it is entering inside the combustion chamber. So, now the next step it is to calculate at what temperature this air is entering inside the combustion chamber. So, let us look at that case. So, here in this case it says my exit pressure from the hot stream because of 2 percent pressure drop this pressure is coming 4874.86 kilo Pascal. Okay. Now, let us try to understand in order to calculate this point 4 H say here this is representing the heating that is what is happening because of our regenerator. And our requirement is to calculate what is my temperature at this point 4 H. Okay. Now, how can we do this? So, regenerator effectiveness that is what is given by 40 H minus say T04 and this in denominator it is T07 minus T04. Now, here in this case this effectiveness it is known to us, but this temperature T04 H it is not known to us. At the same time, T07 also is not known to us. What is this T07? It is the temperature from the exit of LP turbine. Since we have not done any calculation for 0 0.5, 6 and 7, so that point is unknown. Okay, so, if that is unknown, we cannot do calculation for T04H. What can be done? Say, let us target say T07. How do we get T07? This T07 it is exit temperature from the LP turbine. So, we will be putting our say work balance, it says my LP turbine work that is what is being used to rotate my LP compressor and the fan. So, let us try to put in terms of say my energy equation, it is MCP delta T0. So, here in this case, if we look at we have number of unknowns. One, that is what is say T06 that is my turbine entry temperature, LP turbine entry temperature that is unknown. 
even this fuel air ratio also is unknown to us. So, let us say like we do not have any value of T06. This T06, how do we calculate? So, let us move in the other direction, let us move towards say in a reverse direction. Let us say we are able to calculate our work balance, it is in terms of work by my HP turbine, that is what is used to rotate my HP compressor. So, if we are putting this equation, it says we will be able to calculate what is the T06 because here in this case this T05 is known to us. So, let us try to look at what is the meaning of that. Now, here in this equation we have a known as T06, say T04 it is known to us, T03C is also known to us. But if we look at carefully, what about this fuel air ratio? This value of F also is unknown. So, in this equation if we look at we are having two unknowns, one it is T06 and second it is in terms of my fuel air ratio. So, let us try to systematically solve this numerical by some iterative method. Okay? So, let us look at and say let us assume suppose say if I consider F equal to 0, you can take the numbers, maybe you can take 0 0.01 also, you can take 0 0.02 also. For the sake of explanation, let me take that f equal to 0. If I will be taking that f equal to 0, by simplification of this equation, we will be getting our exit temperature from the HP turbine, it is 1570.5 Kelvin. Now, since by this temperature is known, we can calculate what will be the temperature at the exit of my LP turbine because that is what is of our need in order to calculate what is our T04H. So, let us put this numbers. If we are putting that number, my LP turbine exit temperature is coming 830.84 Kelvin. Now, since we have T06, we have T07, let us put the formula here in terms of effectiveness. So, this effectiveness based calculation, it will give me the temperature at the entry of the combustion chamber to be 804.51 Kelvin. Now, what all temperature we have calculated that also need to be verified. Okay. How do we verify that? Okay. So, let us take this as our control volume. We have our understanding about the combustion chamber. So, this is my input energy. It is m dot into H04H. This is our amount of fuel what we are adding and this is representing what energy that is what will be coming out. So, this is our energy balance. So, let us try to calculate based on what numbers we have. So, here in this case my T04H what we have calculated. Let us put in this equation and let us try to calculate the value of F is it coming same or not. So, let us put these numbers. If we are putting this number, my value of F, if you look at, it is coming 0 0.0327. That is not equal to what all we have assumed. So, what we will be doing? Now, we will be taking this F as 0 0.327 and we will try to calculate T06, T07, T04H, again we will be calculating our value of F and by that we will try to converse with the value of F. So, here if you look at it says with number of iterations value of F is coming to be 0 0.032 and that is what is giving the same number as per our assumption. So, as I told there are different methods, different approaches. You can go with those approaches. This is at this moment I am representing as one of the way, one of the easiest way to solve this numerical. Even you can go with assumption of T04H also. You can assume T06 or T07 also. There is nothing wrong in doing that kind of calculation. Okay? So, you need to follow one of the approach. Say for sake of simplicity, we have taken the approach of assuming the value of F. Okay?
do not get confused what is the reason why are you taking app only you can take any parameter here okay now say since this value is converse we will try to calculate the parameters here so what all parameter we are looking for is in terms of what will be the pressure at the exit of the combustion chamber it says there is a drop of pressure by 3 percent so let's try to calculate this exit pressure that is coming as 4728.62 kilopascal. Now let's try to calculate this fuel air ratio as we have discussed this is coming to be 0 0.032. Once these numbers are known we have all parameters known to us. So let's try to move with say HP turbine calculation again. Here this is we are representing in terms of our work balance for HP turbine as well as HP compressor and efficiency it is our mechanical efficiency. So let us put our work balance. If we are putting this work balance and simplifying this equation we will get the equation in terms of T06. Let us put what all numbers are known to us based on these numbers my exit temperature is coming. 1578.54 Kelvin. Now let us try to look at what about say the exit pressure from our HP turbine. This exit pressure we can calculate based on our understanding of efficiency. This is similar to what all we have discussed in our earlier cycles. So let us put that in terms of my expansion ratio. So based on that we can calculate the exit pressure. This exit pressure is coming through 2345.86 kilopascal. So this is the exit pressure from the HP turbine. Similarly, we will be doing our calculation for the LP turbine. For that LP turbine, we know our LP turbine is used to rotate LP compressor as well as fan. Let us put our work balance in this equation and try to formulate this equation for T07. Since T06 is known to us, all other parameters are known to us. Let us put those numbers, just do the calculation carefully, make a habit what all parameters you will be taking from the previous calculation. So here if you look at systematically it has been written what parameters are given and what all we have done in terms of calculated data. Now let us try to calculate this temperature, it is 861.82 Kelvin that is exit temperature from the LP turbine. We will try to calculate the exit pressure similarly what we have done for our HP turbine. My expansion ratio or say pressure ratio that is what is we are correlating in terms of turbine efficiency and temperature. So by doing that calculation the exit pressure is coming 123.05 kilopascal. Okay. Now this is what about say my LP turbine calculation. We have our very important component that is our regenerator. In regenerator also we are having drop of pressure by 2 percent. That is what is giving the exit pressure from our regenerator and that is 120.6 kilopascal. This pressure that is what will be the pressure at the entry of my nozzle. That is the reason why this calculation is equally important. Okay. Now in order to do the calculation for what will be my temperature T08, we need to go with the energy balance for the regenerator and here we can write down our T08 in terms of T07 and T04H minus T04. So let us put this number, so my temperature is coming. 713.94 Kelvin. Okay. Now the next component what we have is our turbine nozzle. This turbine nozzle it has been represented by say process 8 to 9. So my entry pressure will be P08. Very first we will be doing the calculation for the critical pressure. This critical pressure ratio we are calculating in terms of say nozzle efficiency and specific heat ratio. Since it is a hot section that is the reason why be careful this gamma value we are taking as 
So, let us try to do the calculation for the critical pressure and this critical pressure is coming 64.05 kilo Pascal. This pressure is lower than that of our atmospheric pressure and that is the reason why this nozzle is unchocked nozzle and my exit pressure P9 will be P infinity that is 101.325 kilo Pascal. Okay. Now, our next requirement it is what will be the static temperature from the exit of this nozzle because we want to calculate what will be the exit velocity from this nozzle. So, let us look at this calculation. So, this temperature ratio it is been represented in terms of the pressure ratio and this will give the static temperature at the exit of the nozzle to be 685.82 Kelvin. We have our nozzle efficiency, nozzle velocity equation. So, here in this we will be putting the numbers for the temperature, static temperature of 685.82. That is what will be giving the exit velocity from the turbine nozzle to be 249.83 meter per second. Now, you have understood why we are doing this calculation, what all are the importance in terms of calculation for P08, T08 and you no know, T9 and V9. Similarly, we need to do the calculation about the fan, say fan exit nozzle. So, let us look at fan exit nozzle. What is the pressure? You can say this pressure is P010. Be careful that is not say P02A. Okay? This is what is a drop of pressure which is happening inside our intercooler. So, let us try to put these numbers. Here the gamma value is 1.4. Let us calculate the critical pressure. This critical pressure is coming 84.06 kilo Pascal, which is less than that of our atmospheric pressure. So, we can say our nozzle is unchocked nozzle and the exit pressure is atmospheric pressure that is 101.325 kilo Pascal. Once we have calculated the static pressure in line to what all we have done for the turbine nozzle, we will do the calculation for the static temperature and the velocity at the exit from the say fan nozzle. So, here this temperature ratio that is what will be giving the static temperature as 308.43 Kelvin and our exit velocity that is 258.98 meter per second. Okay. Now, we have our velocity values, our next target, yes, you are right, we would like to calculate the performance parameters. We know our performance parameter for the turbofan engine, they are say my thermal efficiency, propulsive efficiency, overall efficiency, thrust specific fuel consumption and very important that is what is our thrust and for the thrust calculation we need to have the area of this nozzle. So, let us try to do the calculation for the area of the nozzle. So, what all we have in terms of mass flow rate, we can say my total mass flow rate that is what we are calculating based on our bypass ratio. This bypass ratio it gives the fan mass flow rate to be 460 kg per second and my total mass flow rate that is what will be 496.8 kg per second. Okay. So, now let us try to do the calculation for what will be the area for both the nozzles. So, let us look at for very first say turbine nozzle. For that mass flow rate we can put as a density into area into velocity. Here in this case the velocity is known to us we are unknown with what is the density. This density we can calculate based on my static pressure and static temperature and this is coming as 0.5148 kg per meter cube. Let us put this number that is what will be giving our area as 0.2953 meter square. So, this is the area from the turbine nozzle. Now, in line to that we can do our calculation for the fan nozzle also. For the fan it is given by density into area into velocity. Say here also this density at the exit it is unknown to us, but 
we know what are the static pressure and static temperature. So, based on that my density is coming 1.145 kg per meter cube and we can calculate the exit area at is 1.303 meter square. So, now we have almost all parameters available with us in order to calculate the thrust. Okay. So, let us do the calculation for the thrust. This thrust calculation we are representing as a cold thrust plus hot thrust. My cold thrust we are representing in terms of my say m dot fan V11 minus V infinity plus this is my pressure thrust from the say fan nozzle. Similarly, this is representing my hot thrust. So, let us try to put all the numbers and if we are putting that my net thrust is coming 145.64 kilo newton. Now, next is to calculate the thrust specific fuel consumption. This thrust specific fuel consumption that is coming to be 8.1 gram per kilo newton second. Okay. Now, let us try to calculate the propulsive efficiency. We have a formula for the propulsive efficiency. Since my V infinity is 0, that is the reason my propulsive efficiency will be 0. Let us try to calculate our thermal efficiency. For this thermal efficiency, almost all parameters are known to us in terms of total thrust, m dot core, m dot fan, as well as calorific value and my fuel consumption. So, if we put all these numbers, the thermal efficiency is coming to be 42.13 percent. And if we calculate overall efficiency, since my propulsive efficiency is 0, so my overall efficiency will go 0. Okay. So, this is how we have to do our calculation for say turbofan engine with intercooler and regenerator. Now, with the interest of time and limited lectures, we will not be discussing more in terms of what all are the flight conditions, but I am sure you can solve this numerical by assuming some flight Mach number, suppose say 0.8 at different altitude, you will try to understand what all are the effect of different parameters on say the performance of the engine. You can do the plotting with study of variation of fan pressure ratio, variation of LP compressor pressure ratio, HP compressor pressure ratio, turbine entry temperature, what all we have done for almost all cycles you can implement that in order to understand this as a specialized kind of cycle. Okay. So, here we are stopping with say week 9 and you must have enjoyed this week because that is what is very informative with the interest of time as well as due to proprietary nature of the work not much information that is what is available in open domain. I have tried best to explain the upcoming engines and their implementation. Maybe over the time you also will get matured with what is a thought process by different designers, different companies, different research centers and how they will be implementing all their ideas in the engines. So, here we will be stopping for the discussion about the turbofan engines. Now, in next week, we will be discussing about say turbo probe engine, so, where we will be discussing about how exactly these engines are different from what all you have studied up till now in terms of turbojet and turbofan. What all will be the performance parameter that need to be calculated for say turbo probe engine. We will be discussing what all are the major benefits or say advantages and challenges of those turbo probe engine. What thought process people they are having about turbo probe engine that we will be discussing in next week. So, here we are stopping with thank you, thank you very much for your kind attention.